Pulitzer Prize winning playwright David Mamet is one of the most authentic voices of contemporary American life. He is known for his plays, Glen Gary, Glen Ross, and American Buffalo, and such screenplays as The Verdict and Wag the Dog. With his reputation for capturing the darker side of human nature, some critics have been surprised by his latest project, a G-rated film based on a 1910 British court case. The Winslow Boy marks his sixth film as writer-director and stars his wife, Rebecca Pigeon. Raised in Scotland, she has combined two successful careers as an actress and as a singer-songwriter. She last appeared in two 1998 Mammoth productions, the film The Spanish Prisoner and the play The Old Neighborhood. I am pleased to have both of them here on this broadcast. Welcome. Thank you. A uh, little bit of business here. What is this? This is, this is just what? This is a CD that, that's out for how long? Golly, I don't know, as long as they care to distribute it. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean has it been out for a while? Oh, um, yes, it came out. When did it come out? A few months ago. Yeah. yeah. And so. it's a, a CD of Scottish folk songs, oh, traditional, yeah. I am half Scottish. You know. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, this is the first time that you have directed material not written by you. That's right. For, for the movies, I mean, I got my start in the theater directing. I did a lot of Shakespeare, I did a lot of O'Neill, I did a lot of Chekhov, I did a lot of Pinter. So that's how I got started actually as a writer, was directing other people's works. So the only reason I haven't directed anybody else's work uh, uh, for the movies is because I never got around to it. The, the, the way I got my job as a movie director was saying, here, I got this script, and if right, you like right, it good enough yeah. to do it, you've got to let me direct it. <laughs> In other words, the only way they'd let you direct if you brought them a script they That's liked, right. and you happen to own scripts that they like. Yeah. Or have written scripts that they like. That's right. So now you get to direct, so now you hear you're directing The Winslow Boy. What, why this? Well, it's a, it's a great, great story. I saw the play when it played in New York 20 years ago, and I said, geez, I want to do that. It's a story about this little kid who's accused of a, a, a theft. Of, uh, of a money order amounting to about a dollar and because of it he's kicked out of this naval college and his life is ruined and the question of is, concerns his family, his sister is a suffragette trying to get women to vote and everyone in the family is concerned with social justice so the question is does the family support the little kid and fight it they end up, have to end up suing the crown and getting a bill passed in parliament to, to do so or do they say well you know the kid got a bad rap he got accused of something he didn't do let's forget it and go on with our lives do you know what they're saying when they say this is un mammoth like yeah I mean I, I think so I think there's people like say if I may compare if cat may look at a king I'll compare myself to uh, 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 Picasso and say I don't know anything about painting but I know Picasso had a blue period and this painting ain't blue <laughs> You know what they mean when they say this is unmammoth like don't you? I guess so. Yeah, what does it mean? It's it, not dark. Well, it's a gentle period piece, right. but um, it's, a, it's a play by another great playwright. Yeah. It's very formally structured. It's a melodrama. Have you written a melodrama? I think, uh, yeah. I wrote a couple. Of, in fact, <laughs> Nigel Hawthorne did one of The, the yes, Shawl. right. It's a melodrama. Yeah. Right. Um, so I, I find that there's many uh, you know, similarities between the two, Terence Rattigan and, and David Mamet. Right. Um, and I know of his interest in Victorian novels and... Uh, so you're not surprised he'd pick this? No. You're really not? No, not at all. And why do you think he would pick it? Well, um, it's a very compelling story that um, perhaps many people might uh, relate to because it's about fighting for principles, protecting your family, at what point as you were saying, do you stop fighting for, do, what, at what point does fighting for your principles become self-indulgence and arrogance? Um, and like that, help me out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, go go ahead. Ahead. No, go ahead. I'm going to say that, that, that it, the story happens to be set in uh, Edwardian times, 1912, in England, so you get to wear nice pretty dresses. But that's really once upon a time, but the story is, it's around us all the time. I mean, it's the same story as yeah. um, the Scopes Monkey Trial. Why don't you just shut up? You can teach whatever you want, just don't make a big thing about it because there's a law against evolution. You know what it is? It's a story about people being brave and fighting for what is right despite being vilified by all around. Yeah. You know, mm. people being brave. And that moves us all. All right, either one of you set this up. This is the scene. This is where Ronnie uh, shows the letter to Catherine that states he has been expelled. Need I say more? Or how no, do I that's need it. to put context this? That's it. All right, roll tape. Here it is. The annoying thing was that I had a whole lot of neatly turned phrases ready for him, but he wouldn't let me use them. I'm sure they were rather good. 
I thought they were. If you want to do your speech for me. Love to. Let me just make a couple points here. One is that you just said to me watching this that I said, you feel good about this? And you said, yeah. You said generally with your play, your movies, you don't watch them for five years. Right. Because? I just, uh, because when you're looking at them, you have such a great responsibility as a movie director. When you look at your movies, it's very hard not to say, oh, my God, what did I do there? Or why did I yeah. shoot it that way? Or please, please, can I go back and direct that movie again? See? So, and this is easier also because it's someone else's words. It's Radigan's right. words. Yeah. Now, how close did you follow the script? I the followed it fairly played. close. I mean, uh, I, 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 I cut some, uh, and I rearranged some, and I wrote some uh, interstitial material, made up yeah. a couple of scenes. But the, it's, it's like saying I went into Frank Lloyd Wright's house and I, I moved a couple of chairs around. Yeah, right, right. It's a great play. It's, yeah, I know. It just changed the furniture a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you, did you see the movie, in 1948 movie? Sure. What, no, was it Anthony Asquith? Who was it? Yeah, Anthony Asquith directed it. It's uh, Margaret Layton, Cedric Hardwick, and Robert Donat, mm -hmm. who's related to Rebecca Pigeon. Yes? Through marriage. My aunt married his son. You think of yourself as a writer. I suppose so. What do you mean you suppose so? Well, you know, it's only recently that that uh, people in the theater got got uh, pigeonholed about what they did. In, in, even when I was a kid, starting out in the late 60s, and when we had our own theater companies, everybody did everything. Uh, uh, the lighting person might say, here's a play, put it on. And the director might say, you know, screw this, I'm going to act in the next yeah. play. And if you look at the history of the theater, that's always where the writers came from. The writer was the stage manager who stood up and said, wait a second, I've written the play. Or the actor said, wait a second, I've written the play. All the great writers started out like that. Nine out of ten people I know face it. If you said David Mamet, they'd say, one of America's greatest playwrights. Period. That's what they'd say. They wouldn't say director. They wouldn't say screenwriter, even though all these credits. You kind of, the impression is you sort of waltz in to do those things mm -hmm. because, uh, but you're taking a lead from what you primarily do which is right place. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's true. I, I'm very uh, fortunate in being able to do a couple of things because I get to, I get to change. You know, I get to spend a year sitting by myself in a little room and then I get to come out and work with Rebecca and all my best friends and play Dollhouse and make a movie. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes it can be dangerous talking about talent because then you, you, you forget about all the hard work that goes into things. I mean, people, people practice and they, uh, they gain experience and they get better and better and they work hard, hard, hard. They have talent as well, but they have great persistence and great uh, application. Did you have any reservations about doing this? I was a bit scared because it was such a great film. Are you talking about the Winslow yeah, boy? Yeah, of course. Um, it was such a great film. Margaret Layton and Robert Donat, you know, two wonderful stars. Um, but I have great faith in Dave, and uh, and also I, I was overjoyed that he wanted to do it because I loved the the, the, the play. Terrence Reddick play. Yeah. yeah, you'd seen the and play. And I really loved the part. You'd seen the play. I'd seen the film actually. Yeah. I knew the film. And so you said, "This is something I'd love to do." This. Mm, yes. Now, what about him directing? Well, it's a family business, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. What, meaning between the two of you. Well, no, it's always been a family business because you were on the road. I mean, up until the movies came into the picture, you yeah. were on the road, you were touring. And who you were touring with? You were touring with your family, you were, you were sleeping with the people you worked with and working with the people you slept with. And what other choice was there? And families <laughs> went from <laughs> generation to generation, still do, in yeah. the circus. And Some magazine yeah. that I read, and see, I mean, here is what you have, your name's become almost a kind of term of art. Or, you know. Some magazine, I think Premier, described your performance as Mametian. Oh, yes. You know, what, what does that mean? I don't know, and I, uh, you know, I don't, I think that's a little bit, um, a little bit, you know, trying to define me by my husband, a little bit. Yeah, I would be a little bit, I hear leery you. Leery of know, that, exactly. yeah. Um, that's why I'm trying in this conversation not to do that. But. Yes, no, but I think it's an easy thing to do. Uh, with actors uh, who work with uh, great writers and directors to mm -hmm. say, oh, that's, that's the, the, the you know, the, the, the writer or director should get the credit for the performance, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a lazy thing to say. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Let me ask you about you. Do you, yeah. you think of yourself as primarily a, a singer, a songwriter, an actress, or just a performer, just a creative person? You know, I never thought of myself as a songwriter. I got into it purely by accident. And I still, you know, think of it that way. Um, 
even though I've recorded five CDs so far. I recorded one with a, an independent label in London, and then I recorded a CD with Phonogram, with my band Ruby Blue. Yeah. And now I've done three CDs with this company, Chesky Records, here. And, um, and all of my songs, you know, that I wrote. And, but I still somehow can't believe that, that I really am a singer-songwriter. <laughs> Here's another scene from The Winslow Boy. This is where, um, where you uh, first meet Sir Morton, played by Jeremy uh, Northam. Here it is, roll tape. Do you think we can bring the case into court by a collusive action? I really have no idea. Curry and Curry seem to think that might hold. Tell me about the rest of the casting. Oh, well, as you see, it's Jeremy Northam, very, very much the traditional matinee idol. And yeah quite wonderful and there's Nigel Hawthorne who plays Rebecca's father and the Gemma Jones who plays her mother yeah. and the Colin Stinton who plays the scorned lover and um, Sarah Sarah Stewart and uh, Aidan Gillett and these are a lot of people that you worked with at RADA right yeah I was at RADA with uh, Aidan Gillett the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art yeah, yeah. The, the, this is this is a first period piece for you though is it or not on film no, I it's did a, um, I Uncle did Vanya, oh, well, and I did a Vanya, film yeah. called The Dawning with um, Anthony Hopkins and Trevor Howard and Gene Simmons. Um, when was She's that? She's Been Away with Pe Peggy Ashcroft. I did a film called She's Been Away with uh, Peggy Ashcroft and uh, James Fox and Geraldine James, directed by Peter Hall. Do you like film as much as you like being on stage? I do. I love film. I love working. The two are very different disciplines. I know, but why do you like heard. film then for one who's Golly, still trained a on the hard stage? Question. Well, you get to be, you get to be a lot more detailed, perhaps, or work in a smaller way. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's the question of your eyes. Like you just moved your eyes. That can make, that can be the scene. Yeah. And um, it's a much more visual medium. So a, a, a scene can be very important where you don't, as you say, do much except move your eyes. Whereas on the stage, am I right here? Yeah, of course you, you talk a lot. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Be, <laughs> you talk a There's lot. There's a lot of jabber on, on the stage. On stage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and also on a stage you have to be a lot bigger and you have to shout at the other guy. It feels what's like the, you're shouting. What's the difference in writing plays and writing for the screen? Well, writing for the screen, uh, one tries to leave out the dialogue because you tell a story in a picture, you get the idea immediately. The audience sees the picture, they get it. Yeah, but Wag the Dog was great dialogue. I mean, as, well, as for what it was, but it was. And so, and, but in, in a much more powerful way, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, but which was made into a film. Right. Did you write the screenplay? Yeah. You know, but I mean, the, there was lots of dialogue there, yeah, right? That's true. In mean, both the, of those films. Yeah, but in the perfect film, there's no dialogue. Oh, yeah, really? but but well, I mean, it's a silent movie. Sure, because it's because it's, 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 it's pictures. The dialogue has really got to be a desk hand. As we see, I think, in this movie, The Winslow Boy, it's wonderful dialogue. It's dialogue throughout, but the dialogue wants to be the desk hand underneath what's actually happening between the characters, which the camera The dialogue is accents it or, or, or is underneath it? It's underneath. It's like a baseline but the, 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 underneath it, and a lot of times it wants to go against what, what you're seeing. What you see is a lot of reserve in the actors, a kind of an Edwardian reserve. They aren't saying what they think, and they're talking to figure out how to act with each other. And I think it's very powerful. This film opens in New York on April 30th. David Mamet and Rebecca Pigeon um, and many others, Sir Jer Jeremy uh, Northam, and who else is in it? Nigel Hawthorne. Nigel, Jim Nigel Jones. Hawthorne, who was in many things, including Madness of Madness King, King George, King George yeah. mainly for theater and film. And then it was, that, was that long series he did in London on oh, yes, television? Minister. Yes, Minister. Yes, Minister. Yes, Minister. Classic. Yeah. Classic. Uh, thank you, Rebecca. Pleasure to have you thank here in this you program. Very David, much, as always. Thank you very much. You. Again, April 30th. Uh, the Winslow Boy opens by Sony Pictures Classics. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs>